If yachts could talk, what stories they'd tell, tales of travel and adventure, merriment and mirth, family fun and romantic retreats. Bunty is one such yacht, a vessel that has brought countless happy memories for her owner and continues to offer opportunities of escape to a world of luxury and freedom. Freedom to just relax and enjoy some of the world's most beautiful locations. Like Venice, for example, I'd forgotten what a beautiful city Venice really is. It's spectacular. And let me start by saying that if you're a yacht owner watching this video and you've never taken your yacht to Venice, you really should. It has to be one of the most enchanting cities on the planet. And this is a great yacht to visit Venice in. So let's start by just talking a little bit about Bunty. Bunty is a Bonetti classic. My records indicate that they built 20 of this particular model of Bonetti classic. 20, that is a colossal amount of yachts to build for one specific model. I would go as far as to say that it's not just been a huge commercial success as a model, but it also has helped to build up the commercial success of the entire brand of Bonetti. That's no exaggeration. And as we look around the yacht, You'll see why I say that. Let's start with a few vital statistics. The yacht is 36.6 meters long, has a beam of 7.9 meters and draws 1.96 meters. Her top speed is 16 knots. Her cruising speed is 13 knots. And the captain tells me that 11 knots is really the sweet spot for a comfortable cruise and fuel efficiency. Those cold figures, though, don't reflect the charm of this model of yacht, which undoubtedly lies not just in her elegant styling, but also in her well-designed layout. Let's take a look around. Starting with the transom, and the transom is well worth noting, because here we have a transom garage with a five and a half meter tender inside and two jet skis. This whole section actually turns over and becomes a huge swim platform that also allows access to the sea, not just for you and for your guests, but also for the water toys. Moving up, we come to the aft deck and something I talk about a lot in different walkthrough videos is the importance of an intelligent distribution of space. If you have a yacht like this, that's 36.6 meters, 121 feet, for those of you that prefer feet, then you do have to make sure that every area is well studied. And this is a very good aft deck size for this size of yacht. You've got space for the crew to be able to come in and serve breakfast. We've even staged a breakfast table for you so that you can imagine yourself doing that. You've got plenty of space for the crew. Actually, this morning when we were filming, Slava was preparing uh, his gear here. He was getting the gimbal all set up, but still the crew had plenty of time and plenty of space to walk past him to be able to untie uh, the yacht from the dock. And I've seen yachts that actually have this area covered up with kind of a, a heavy lid. I understand why they do that. It looks maybe a little bit neater, but actually this is beautiful stainless steel equipment here. And it's so much easier for the crew to be able to come and do what they have to do without disturbing the guests, or in our case, without disturbing Slava as he set the gimbal. Inside. And you can see why this is called a Bonetti Classic. It is, in fact, very classic styling indeed. There's plenty of space here. And something I really like about this particular yacht is that the owner opted to have loose furniture around. And that's great because if you come along and you decide to buy the yacht, if you want to, you can keep it. But if you prefer, it's easy to get rid of some of this uh, loose furniture and replace it with furniture of your own taste. It's a very flexible layout in that respect. I like the fact that the owner of this yacht has got his, uh, his piano here as well. He's certainly an owner that enjoys using the yacht and you'll see more indications of that as we walk through it. In fact, Slava and I were talking earlier about our overall impressions and both of us felt that this is a yacht that feels loved. It's a yacht that's been well looked after, well maintained, used in the proper way, and really loved. 
One feature that you'll see that's different on different Bonetti Classics is this. This is the stairwell that leads down to the guest accommodation. Now on some classics of this size and this model, this stretches from floor to ceiling and it creates a partition between the salon area and the dining area. Personally, I prefer this layout. I like to be able to see all the way through in the feeling of space that it gives. Um, but I guess if somebody preferred to you know, retrofit, they could probably have this done in a different way. As I say, personally, I like it a lot. Something I'd not noticed on other Benetti classics, but I'm sure is there, is this door. Um, the captain was telling me it's not unusual if they're tied to side two in the dock, then guests and the owner will come on board through a side door that's in the side bulwark. And then they can come straight through from there, through these doors, and this is their main entrance then um, onto the yacht. Guests that arrive by tender tend to step onto that swim platform because that's a lot more comfortable. But when they're tied up to the dock, that tends to be the preferred entrance. On the port side, we have that bar. I really do like that. Uh, I think it's great to have a bar anyway in this area of the yacht where you can get some of the crew to come along and serve you whiskey or whatever you prefer, uh, or you can just serve yourself. And it's kind of hidden away quite nicely there, but still very comfortable to be able to get access to it. And then moving forward, we have this lovely formal dining area. Um, once again, I think a lot of people watch these videos and say, well, you'd never eat inside on a yacht. And of course, you're right, on the whole, you don't. But it's also true that in a two or three week vacation, not every day is good weather. I mean, right now we're going through an incredible heat wave, but then sometimes there's been huge thunderstorms and rain, and you certainly can't eat outside then. So it's great to have this lovely, elegant area to eat in. To port, we have the galley, and although I've been on several Bonetti Classics, every time I go into the galley, it surprises me. It surprises me for its size. Uh, in yachts of this size, sometimes the galley can be compromised in order to have a bigger lounge area or a bigger master stateroom. Here, I think they've got the proportions perfect, and that's a really good functional galley area. Let's move forward and take a look at the master stateroom. And actually, before we get to the master stateroom, it's worth noting that here, there's a small day head, very convenient thing to have on board your yacht. But here now we're in the owner's area and we have this lovely little study area, lots of natural light coming through from here. I can imagine this gets used quite a lot actually, because more and more yacht owners actually work while they're on the yacht in a far more relaxed atmosphere than they would perhaps in the office with less disturbance. And this is just a nice snug place to put your computer, get some work done. Here we start to see the amount of storage space with really good wardrobe space. I'm not gonna open it up simply because the owner's clothes are in there now, it just doesn't seem respectful to do that, but good hanging space there. And then look at this for an owner's cabin, it is beautiful, surrounded by natural light that comes in, cozy, comfortable, nice thick mattress here as well. And of course, as you would expect, a sumptuous ensuite bathroom. Let's take a look though at your guest accommodation. This is a very simple layout and I'm not gonna to do too much talking in the guest accommodation because honestly the pictures will do the talking for me. Here we have a double bed. And this here is known as a Pullman. This actually folds down so that you've got an extra sleeping space, let's say, if you really need it. Of course, this cabin also has its own ensuite. Through to the other side, and we have twin bunks, and again, that important Pullman, and again, a beautiful ensuite bathroom. And I'm guessing that these two staterooms, which are pretty much identical, 
is where you'll sleep the VIP guests. This is a really nice space. You've got plenty of hanging locker space and nice sized bed, good amount of sunlight coming in, and of course, that sumptuous bathroom. On the upper deck, not surprisingly, is the bridge. In fact, many would call this the bridge deck. The bridge is really nicely laid out. There's all of the equipment that you need, very accessible, very visible. There's even a little area in the corner where you can sit and watch the navigation, but I particularly liked this. Look, there's actually space to lay out a proper chart. In fact, this morning, I'm pretty sure that we met the yacht around about here exited the marina and we had special permission to be able to go down the Canal di San Marco. So we went all the way down, we went past the Piazza di San Marco, the place with the most expensive cappuccinos on the planet. We turned around all the way back up the Canale and out to sea since we couldn't fly a drone in the area of Venice and we wanted to get that lovely drone footage for you. While we're in the bridge I want to tell you also a little bit about the crew accommodation on the yachts. Here there is ample accommodation for seven crew in a total of four crew cabins and of course with a crew mess. Moving aft from the bridge we come into this beautiful guest area, the Sky Lounge. It is absolutely classic again in its styling, it's spacious and it's spacious again because of the design of the yacht. They have no side decks here, the side decks run underneath then they go up to the bow and that allows them to have this huge expanse. We have a little working area here if the owner of the yacht wants to do a little bit of work while he's on board. But I particularly like this. I can just imagine myself here serving guests with a Harvey Wallbanger as they sit there, watch the television and enjoy socialising. Sky lounges are often one of the most used parts of the yacht when the guests are not outside and access to the outside, of course, is very easy indeed through these doors. And again, I want to highlight that beautiful balance of space distribution on this yacht. It's one of the reasons that the Benetti Classic is such a successful model. This is a really spacious and useful upper aft deck. That is a very good sized sky lounge. The whole yacht seems to work together to offer the right amount of space in the right place. This is a lovely area to be able to sit and eat out from beyond the shaded area. You've got some beautiful sun pads lying there as well. A little cozy area here for conversation and cocktails before you have your meal. What more could anybody want? I'll tell you what more somebody could want. I'll show you. You could possibly want your own gymnasium on your yacht. Outdoor gymnasium at that. The owner of this particular yacht is very health conscious and there are bits of gymnasium equipment dotted all over the sun deck. And I just can't imagine a better position to be in to go for a run on the, on the treadmill to be able to exercise on. I've no idea what that's called, but I think it's one of those machines that puts you in, in motion. It's just a great area. And, and of course here, look at the way they've integrated the, the bar with the jacuzzi. You can sit there with the jacuzzi, enjoy a glass of Prosecco. <sighs> what more could anybody possibly want from a yacht? One more thing though that I know that everybody who watches this channel does like to see and that is the engine room. The engine room package on this Benetti Classic is based around two MTU 2000 series M91 engines 
A couple of things to note, that the yacht was equipped with an extra-large silencer package, and also that she has factory-fitted NIAD stabilizers that work both underway and at anchor. Although I have to say that the weather was so perfect on our day of filming that it was hardly a test for them. I must admit that this morning when I woke up and we came down to the yacht, I wasn't quite sure what to be able to say about her, simply because this is a very classic yacht. I filmed similar models before, 20 of them were built. It's a simple, basic layout. So I thought, what can I possibly say about it? But actually the more time that I spent on board, the more I realized that it is that simplicity that has made her such a successful model for Bonetti and such a popular yacht to own. The layout of the cabins, the size of the galley, the space of the decks. It's no wonder that 20 of these were built and sold. And even after that, when they refreshed the model, they only really put on about 30 centimeters to the length, which is about one foot, and just did some very, very minor tweaks because this is such a winning formula. From here in Venice, Bunty is now making her way slowly and leisurely uh, down Croatia and then around Italy into the south of France, where she'll appear at the Cannes Yachting Festival and then at the Monaco Boat Show because she is, in fact, for sale. I can't recommend highly enough that if you are a qualified buyer and this is the kind of size of yacht that you're looking at, do make an effort to get in contact with my two colleagues that represent the owner, Ed Dickinson and Kevin Merrigan. Their contact details will be on screen in a few moments. If you can get to one of those boat shows, that would be great. They would love to show you the yacht themselves. And there, you'll see a yacht that's not just really made the history of one of the greatest yacht manufacturers, but has also been looked after and loved by an excellent owner. Yeah.